In this episode, we're going to take a look at the game Golem Overlord. Firstly, I'm going to provide a brief introduction for those new to the game and possibly looking for a new game to play. And then we're going to roll into gameplay. Specifically, I'm going to look at the equipment upgrade process because I have to go through that and demonstrate it um, because I have a number of daily and overall quests to complete. And it should be interesting to see what I get out of the quest chest. So please join me. Now, to end things up, I am going to provide a brief update on where the guild, my guild, stands, uh, especially in light with the new research process, which started a couple weeks ago. If this sounds interesting to you, please stand by. Hey everyone, welcome back. Bronze Dragon here saying, hey, thanks for dropping by. I appreciate your time. Uh, also, if you like this kind of content, please consider liking and subscribing to the video because it does help. Also, if after listening to the video, you're new to the game, you want to go ahead and start, please check the show notes and use my referral code. I would appreciate that. Okay, so with that, this is a brief uh, kind of description of what Golem Overlord is. It's kind of a game in the long tradition of build your army up and attack type of games, which have been around since the advent of the internet, really, um, except for this is on, this is a Web3 game. It is on the Hive blockchain, and you can earn money doing this. You can earn crypto, which can be converted into money. Okay. At the heart of it, this game is about building your army of golems up. And these golems mine for you on a continual basis where you can harvest materials. And in this case, the materials are called part and shard. And those two are cryptocurrencies, which are on the Hive blockchain. So if you're not very Web3 related, don't get too psyched out yet. Um, it's very simple and easy to use. But with that said, you also use those same golems to attack people to get part and shard off of them. So the game is really about building up your army as far as offense goes, as far as defense goes, and as far as actually mining your part and shard goes. So, And there's more to the game as we get into it, but uh, the game has evolved extensively as it's been around for about a year now. It is a one-man development team, so it, it does kind of go in spurts. Uh, but for my money, uh, Yixon, who develops the game, uh, has done a great job developing the game over the last year. This game would fall under the play to earn category. However, I would say that this isn't something you're gonna make a lot of money on. Uh, it is possible to make some money on it, and I have, um, but it's not going to replace your job or anything. Um, and it is, I find it uh, relatively fun. Uh, another item I like about it is that since it's on the Hive Engine, you can take the part and shard tokens over to Hive Engine and buy, sell, trade uh, for other tokens in other games and, you know, uh, however you like, you know, swap them back and forth. Okay, so with that said, uh, if you find this type of game interesting, you might want to check it out. Um, you can use the link in the show notes like I set up, up at the top of the, the show, um, and it will take you to a page in which you buy the one, the one entrance to the game is called a Golem Answer Staff. And uh, depending upon the day, uh, I forget exactly what the price is right now, but it's going to be about 10 bucks somewhere, okay? And that's really the only money you have to put in the game. Obviously, just like a lot of other games, uh, you can get in and you can buy items uh, which would improve your play experience, etc. Uh, but you don't necessarily have to. It's one of those games where you can build over time and just uh, grow your stats, grow your golems, everything like that, and work it that way if you wish. Or you could jump in and buy a bunch of stuff and be a lot stronger, a lot faster. One of the big evolutions I've found in the game that I really like is the quests, the daily and the quest lines. When you first jump in, uh, when I started at the very beginning, there were no quest lines, okay? So there was, you just kind of had to figure things out on your own. Now there is an overall quest line to lead you through the game and help you learn how to play the game and make it pretty simple. And as you jump in, it provides nice rewards for you to actually play the game, which uh, in turn helps to strengthen you and gives you some items to use, 
etc. So um, then they have the daily quests, which after you get up in the run, uh, up and running in the game, you can start completing the daily quests. I have my daily quest log open here because we're getting ready to work with it uh, and give you an example. Um, now this is uh, what would be considered a little bit more advanced than what you would get when you first start. Obviously, you would start with easier quests. Um, but uh, the, the overall quest line makes it easy to jump in the game and learn it and get up and running with it. Okay, now with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at my overall topic today. Uh, as you can see, I have three daily quests that have built up. And the main requirement here for all three to complete them are use pyrite to increase quality on an item, okay? And uh, if, if, if you've played this for a while, you know that pyrite can get expensive. It's, it's the item where you burn your other, other NFTs to get it. There are specific pyrite items that you can turn in um, for larger amounts of pyrite, and we can take a look at my inventory. Um, these are all the NFTs I have, and say, for instance, if I didn't need, say, for instance, this, this scout, I could click on it, and I could dismantle it and get two pyrite out of it. But as you can see, that's only two, and the quest calls for 200 to be used, which is quite a lot, and it takes a while. Now, there are specific NFTs that are just pyrite, called pure pyrite, which give you more, but uh, those are few and far in between. And if you didn't have any, you would have to buy them off the market, or you would have to buy one of these, uh, or burn one of these extras that you had. Now, with that said, I do have more than 200 ready, and I also have um, an item that needs to be upgraded, okay? So one of the new items uh, I have is body armor. And this is relatively new to me, so what I need to do is I want to try to complete all three quests at one time. I'm not sure if this is gonna work, but we're gonna see, um, by upgrading this body armor with more than 200 pyrite. So let's go ahead and first of all, what you're gonna do is you, if you have the item equipped, you have to unequip it, okay? Now it's unequipped, we're gonna go over to the pyrite forge and we're gonna click on the quality button because that's what we wanna do is we wanna to try to improve the quality of it. So. We open up uh, and it gives us the screen of possibilities of the things that I could try to upgrade. We see my war, uh, storm callers, war harness here. <clears throat> and we're going in this uh, field here, you can try to improve with any amount of pyrite. However, the more you put towards it up to a maximum of whatever the max is that will give you 100%, the more you throw towards it, the higher possibility that the upgrade is actually actually works and doesn't fail. Okay, so I had to really blow this page up because the fonts on this uh, on these cards are pretty hard to read, especially with the different colors. So what I did was I blew up this card so we could take a look at the stats because what we're going to do is upgrade it and see what it ends up uh, what ends up happening. So uh, the current stats on it is that 19, 15 to 30 percent less rep burn but gain full experience plus six, four to eight max energy, plus four, two to four faith. Now, if you're new to the game, don't worry. Uh, these stats won't mean anything to you, but once you get into the game, these are all stats that have some kind of interplay within the game. And overall, you kind of want to just increase all your stats, right? But everybody has a different strategy on how they go about it and what, uh, what they do first, what they increase first. But either way, I want to try to increase these stats. Okay, so I have 278 pyrite to spend, and hopefully that's enough to get me um, above 90% possibility. The more you increase the quality on these, you can see that the quality is at zero. The higher it goes above uh, each, each level you raise the quality, you get better stats, obviously, each time, and it's random. However, um, the cost goes up each time you do it as well. So let's hope that 278 is enough to get me above 90%. Let's see if we can go for 100%. I try, when they start getting more expensive, I at least try to get up above 90%. Let's, uh, let's see what 200 will get us. Uh, okay, so 200 would get us 98% quality, um, and the quest requires... Um, requires 200, but what would, uh, 
Okay, so 100% would be 202. So let's go ahead and do that. That gives me 100% chance of increasing the quality of this item. Okay, it's gonna go through the blockchain. All these are blockchain actions. Okay, so now we can see the results. Um, and I took a screenshot of the old card so we can look at here. So the it went up from 15 to 30 to 16 to 32 percent less rep burn but gained full experience the max energy stayed the same and the faith stayed the same so the main thing that uh, the only thing that upgraded was the less rep burn but full uh, gain full experience um, so this is a good thing because that is a major thing within the game and i'm not going to get into that because that's a I don't want to say more advanced, but uh, I don't want to try and confuse those who are relatively new to the game. But this stands in that uh, if you want to increase the quality of one of your items, this is how you do it. Just go into the Pyrite Forge, select the item, have some Pyrite, which, like I said, you gain through burning other cards or using pure Pyrite, um, and, and that's how you do it. Now, with that said, we come over to the quest, and we'll see uh, that just upgrading that one item using 200 pyrite was enough to complete all three of these quests. Now, to be frank with you, two of these quests have been sitting here for quite a while, okay, a couple of weeks at least. Um, and I was waiting uh, to be able to hopefully get a third one where I could go ahead and make best use of my pyrite. Now, we will see that there is one thing left to uh, complete this quest, and you will also see that these are all four-star quests, which is pretty high, um, which means we should get some nice items out of them. So with that said, let's go ahead, and the last thing I need to do is open a crate. So let's go over an inventory. Now, in this game, just like you're familiar with in other card games and such, where you open a pack or you pay for a pack, in this game, it's crates, okay? And uh, a lot of the stuff is random. There's two different types of crates. I'm not going to go into that, but let's go ahead and search for crate. And we have uh, Vista Troves available, Vista Trove 2 and Vista Trove 3. So um, all of these have uh, backgrounds in them. Um, and when you saw my first screen, we'll go back to it. You'll see one of my backgrounds is equipped. And the higher rarity backgrounds that you equip, you get bonuses. Uh, so let's go ahead and just open a Vista Trove 2. And you can see that they have a 70% chance of getting abundant, which is your commons all the way up to 0.01% for artifact, which is your rarest quality, okay, and everything in between. So let's go ahead and open this and see what's in it. And it's a blue. It's better than a common, but uh, still pretty low on the scale. Oh, well, I did not really consider uh, getting anything higher. I'm My luck in opening crates on this game is not very good. So... Uh, let's go ahead and go back to quests. And we'll see that all of my three quests now have everything fulfilled so I can claim reward. Okay. So I will claim those. I have to claim each one. Okay, now I have a bunch of rewards stacked up here. Now, the reason why I haven't necessarily um, claimed any of these is because they have pretty big prices to them. In this game, you win an award, you win a chest um, or a crate or whatever, um, but you don't necessarily, you have to pay f to open it and you have to pay in shard. And as you can see, the prices are pretty hefty. So when you get into the game and you start completing these quests, you really have to look at which of the quests you actually want to redeem. This is a burning mechanism instituted in the game to get rid of a bunch of shard, right? And what that does is theoretically bring the price of shard uh, up. People using the shard and it burns off, then there's less out there. So this, the shard that everybody does have um, is worth more. That's the general idea right here. But I want to leave you with the fact that, uh, or the idea that these can get pretty pricey, especially the four-star quests.
So uh, what I really want to look at is uh, which equipment or, or, or which quests I want to actually redeem and spend the price, okay? We can see at this time I have 2,000 shard. However, I don't want to go anywhere near spending all that. I just want to um, get possibly what the most, uh, the best out of this I, I can. So looking at these, I can see that first off, I'm interested in this weekly quest because there's a chance to get a precious equipment. And as you saw up front, I just have a chest piece. I need some other equipment because I have open spots. Although this is pretty pricey. This is the most expensive one to open. And I may not open any other ones. I may just open this because this is pretty pricey. Uh, with that said, let's go ahead and spend almost 300 shard to open this up and see what I get. Now, once you open it, it gives you a number of other chests, and you can see the items in it are uh, varying in rarity from one star, two star, and a three star. So let's go ahead and reveal all. So I get a superior amplifier, which was one of the pieces of equipment. I've got a blueprint cache, which comes into play what we're gonna talk about next, and uh, a couple other things, an amplifier and a scout. So I was hoping for better. Uh, like I said, in this game, I have very poor, uh, I, I haven't got a whole lot of good stuff out of opening chests. Either way, I consider that use of shard almost a waste. Um, but with that said, let's go ahead and get into, I just wanted to take you through the completing of a quest and the um, uh, opening your chest uh, for rewards. So let's go ahead and go into my last topic, which is um, how's our, our guild doing? I do have a guild and it's based on this YouTube channel. And we've been doing really good lately, okay? So lately, they've instituted a new system in the game. He developed, Yixon developed it. And it's all about researching different stats and increasing the stats for the guild. And as you increase the stats for the guild, then everybody within the guild gets their stats increased, okay? So it's like a group effort, right? Um, so with that said, I did a video last week, but immediately after I did that video, Yixon went ahead and uh, released the last section uh, of research, which is called the Essence Atelier. Uh, so we'll go ahead and cover this briefly um, because we're directly concerned with this as a guild uh, right now. So right up front, the main overall guild research is uh, the Essence Atelier is concerned with NF NFT rarity, quality, and guild research speed, okay? So you increase this level, and the in this increases the rarity of the NFTs uh, everyone within the guild gets, the quantity of the NFTs everyone in the guild gets, as well as uh, the guild research speed, okay? So this is a common thing you will see on all the major researches as far as uh, increasing guild research speed, which leads into guild research cost reduction, which is what we are, um, we as a guild are concerned with this right now. We are researching some of the other things, but we have most of our focus on reducing the research cost and secondly, the research speed, um, because that's like the main overarching umbrella that affects everything. So if we go ahead and research through this line as high as we can get it, uh, we will, uh, serve two things. Uh, re this one will re reduce the cost of all researches. And then as we uh, complete the main uh, guild researches, um, we will reduce the speed. So half and half, reduce the cost, reduce the speed. Currently, we are on Arcane Library and we're reducing or we're researching this. Um, and this increases our max reputation conversion. But once again, you'll also see that we uh, when we hit the next level, we'll research, uh, the guild research speed will increase as well. And you will see that under Golem Tower and Bunker as well. Now, within the Bunker, um, the guild Bunker has been researchable for quite a while. So we're at level eight on that. Um, and I'm not going to go go back into this, um, but do, do be aware that um, the levels uh, are going to change as far as, or sorry, not levels, but uh, amounts of seats within the guild are going to change in July and August as far as what the bunker levels give. And I think this is all in 
this is kind of in response to, to level setting because there's a, a new research for actually adding, I'm trying to find it here. Here we go. There's a new research instituted where you can actually increase your guild size, which we have been going on as well. And currently we're at uh, extra two spots. So I think they're level setting by reducing some of the spots uh, given by the bunker level. Um, now, right up front under this section, we've been concentrating on shard claim multiplier, which would obviously uh, increase um, the shard that everyone gets within the guild when they do their claim. Uh, we have done a few levels, a couple levels in guild size as well. Uh, under the golem tower, uh, we are focusing on mat maximum research points, which always help. Um, you start out with 20, but as you go and they refill per hour every 20 minutes. Um, but uh, the more points you have, the more you can donate towards your guild and help the guild research. Of course, each research point you spend and donate towards the guild uh, does have a burn cost in part or shard. But once again, that's a burn mechanism built into the game to help the game keep the level, um, the price of part and shard up. So under this section, we are focused on maximum research points for the time being under Arcane Library. We are uh, concentrated on reputation conversion and under the Essence Atelier, like I said, we're focused on research costs at this point. And as I was just talking, we actually just uh, finished research on this. So you will see another item I wanted to cover here is the uh, use of blueprints. You saw earlier when I opened the chest that I got a blueprint um, or a few blueprints in that NFT that I can redeem it for. But on a common everyday basis, everybody within the guild, their first claim of the day donates a quarter of a, a blueprint to the guild. And these just build up. And it's just one time a, game, a day per person. And they build up over the days. Now, once your guild has researched through a level of research, you have to actually, the guild master has to actually go and finish that research, which costs a certain amount of blueprints. And in this case, we are going to uh, have to pay 23 blueprints to go to the next level. And right up here is the total. We have 44, so we have enough, but this is a commodity that's in very short supply. So if you're in a guild and you're trying to help your guild uh, research, uh, when you get those NFTs that are marked um, uh, blueprint, go ahead and click on them and donate to your guild. Then your guild master will be able to use that to finish researches and help everybody in the guild overall. So let's go ahead and finish this. And for some reason, every single time since this started, I've been getting this error. However, whenever I refresh, it has taken effect. So let's go back into the guild. And in chat, you will see that uh, Bronze Dragon's me. I've upgraded research cost one to level five. So let's go back to research. And you will see um, that we have to go back in here and activate it again because I want to stay on this. Um, it will automatically, it looks like, go to another uh, research uh, selection that somebody has already dumped some uh, research points into. Just because I've marked this as what our guild should um, concentrate on doesn't make, it's not mandatory. So people within the guild can go and they can contribute towards other researches if they feel that that is better. However, it will take a, lo a much longer time uh, it's like focus fire, right? You want to focus down a research as fast as possible. And uh, the group all combining in on one uh, will help that go much faster. Okay, uh, this has been Bronze Dragon. I hope this has been interesting or some information, at least an update for all you who are playing Golem, Man uh, Golem Overlord, that is. Uh, I hope everyone on your side is happy and healthy. And I will see you in Golem Overlord. Mm -hmm.